Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Sanjay Mattu with the Midday News. The headlines. Election Commission says it's determined to curb abuse of money power during elections. Guidelines issued to monitor election expenditure. BJP Central Election Committee to meet in New Delhi this afternoon, likely to release first list of Lok Sabha candidates. Deputy Election Commissioner Sudeep Jain reviews election preparedness of West Bengal today. India to continue efforts to get Jesh e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar listed under UN 1267 sanctions. President Ramnath Govind confers more Padma awards on prominent personalities in New Delhi and in sports, India to host the Under-17 Women's World Cup in 2020. The Election Commission says it's determined to curb abuse of money power during elections. Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora said in New Delhi yesterday that the Commission has issued detailed guidelines to monitor election expenditure incurred by candidates and political parties. He said conducting clean elections is now one of the biggest challenges given the prevalent abuse of money power. Earlier, the Commission held a multi-departmental committee meeting on election intelligence to discuss the issue. The BJP Central Election Committee will meet in New Delhi this afternoon. The party is likely to release its first list of candidates for the Lok Sabha polls after the meeting. The list will have the names of most of the candidates for the first phase of polling, which will be held on April 11 in 91 seats. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Party President Amit Shah and other top BJP leaders will attend the Central Election Committee meeting. Senior BJP leader and Tezpur Lok Sabha MP in Assam, Ram Prasad Sarma, has resigned from the primary membership of the party. In a Facebook post, Sarma wrote that he felt insulted when his name did not find place in the shortlisted panel of candidates for the Lok Sabha polls. The BJP is yet to declare its candidate from the Tezpur Lok Sabha constituency. In Tamil Nadu, DMK's ally MDMK today announced the candidature of former MP A. Ganeshamurthy from the Erod Lok Sabha constituency for the April 18 election. MDMK founder Vaiko said this in a statement in Chennai today. Mr. Ganesha Murthy is a two-time MP who had represented Palani and Irod constituencies. The Election Commission is in Kolkata today to review poll preparedness in West Bengal for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. Deputy Election Commissioner Sudeep Jain arrived in Kolkata this morning for the purpose. He held meetings with representatives of political parties. In the afternoon, Mr. Jain will meet district magistrates, superintendents of police and top brass of the state administration to take stock of the law and order situation. Our correspondent reports that 10 companies of central paramilitary forces have arrived in the state to ensure free and fair polls. The seven phase Lok Sabha polls for 42 seats in West Bengal will start on 11th of next month. Allegations and counter allegations over law and order situation by political parties are on. The team led by the Deputy Election Commissioner took stock of the situation at the meeting with the political parties. The BJP leader Mukul Roy reiterated demand to Mr. Jain to declare all, all polling booths of the state as super sensitive in view of massive bloodshed in last panchayat elections in the state. While ruling Trinamool Congress leader Partho Chatterjee BJP's claim and said that peaceful atmosphere is prevailing in the state for holding free and fair elections. Amid political tension, the Central Fort has started route mart at sensitive areas. Origit Chakraborty, AIR News, Kolkata. The Income Tax Department conducted searches at five locations in the Kashmir Valley as well as a few places in Jammu. In a release, the Central Board of Direct Taxes said these actions are part of its continued drive against the use of black money by disruptive elements in Jammu and Kashmir. It said the operations also send a message of deterrence and obviation to those intending to vitiate the democratic process of free and fair elections. As per preliminary results, undisclosed cash of 1 crore 44 lakhs and unaccounted jewellery of 2.48 crore rupees have been seized. In Jammu and Kashmir, 11 people were killed and 4 injured when the vehicle they were travelling in fell into a deep gorge in the Chandakot area of the mountainous Ramban district today. The police say the vehicle was on its way to Rajgarh this morning. Two women and three children are among the dead. 
Our correspondent reports that the condition of the injured is said to be critical. They have been airlifted to the GMC hospital in Jammu. India will continue to make concerted efforts to ensure that jaish e mohammed chief Masood Azhar gets listed under the UN 1267 sanctions regime with 14 of the 15 UN Security Council members supporting New Delhi to list him as a global terrorist. Ministry of External Affairs sources said the country is working with members of the UNSC for the listing of Azhar. Sources said India is confident that eventually Masood Azhar will, will be listed as a global terrorist. New Delhi has already made it clear that terror is non-negotiable. The sources indicated that New Delhi is willing to give China more time to work out issues with Pakistan in listing Masood Azhar. On Pakistan, the sources said the neighboring country has only taken cosmetic steps to dismantle terrorist organizations. Sources ruled out any kind of mediation by any country between India and Pakistan. Sources said Pakistan used F-16 fighter jets in offensive action on the February 27 strikes and this has been conveyed to the United States and the U.S. side has taken note of the Indian concern. A senior U.S. State Department official has said that Washington stood publicly and resolutely with India in its response to the terror attack in Pulbama last month. He said the Trump administration is now focused on pressing Pakistan to take sustained and irreversible actions against terrorist groups operating from its soil. Earlier in the day, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told Fox News that Pakistan has to stop harboring terrorists. The United States has said that the door is open for India if it's prepared to bring a serious proposal to the table to address the issues related to trade and market access. A senior State Department official said yesterday that the U.S. is proud to be India's largest export market and most important economic partner. The U.S. in November last year revoked duty-free concessions on import of at least 50 Indian products, mostly from handloom and agriculture sectors, reflecting the Trump administration's tough stand on trade-related issues with New Delhi. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at the rate AIR News Alerts. President Ramnath Govind today conferred more Padma Awards on 57 prominent personalities at a civil investiture ceremony in Rashtrapati Bhavan. This year, 112 personalities were selected for the Padma Awards, which were announced on the eve of Republic Day. The first set of Padma Awards were given on the 11th of this month, in which Mr. Kovind had presented one Padma Vibhushan, eight Padma Bhushan, and 46 Padma Shri Awards. Here's a report. Folk singer from Chhattisgarh, Tijan Bai, group chairman of LNT Anil Kumar Mani Bhai Naik, were honored with Padma Vibhushan. Entrepreneur Dharampal Gulati, scientist Nambi Narayan, mountaineer Bachindri Pal, former civil servant V.K. Shunglu, and freedom fighter Darshan Lal Jain received the Padma Bhushan. Actor Manoj Bajpay, cricketer Gautam Gambhir, basketball player Prashanti Singh, footballer Sunil Chetri, farmer Kamla Pujari, 107-year-old environmentalist Salu Marada Timakka, and German national Fred Frederick K. Irina Burning, a savior to thousands of abandoned, sick and injured cows, were among the Padma Shri awardees. Anupam Mish, AI News, Delhi. The Prime Minister of Guinea, Dr. Ibrahima Kasori Fafana, will arrive in New Delhi this evening on an official visit. During the visit, Mr. Fafona will call on President Ramnath Kovind at Rashtrapati Bhavan on Monday. He'll also have a meeting with Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu. Mr. Fafona will address the inaugural session of the 14th CII Exim Bank Conclave on India-Africa Partnership Project in New Delhi tomorrow. Commerce and Industry Minister Suresh Prabhu and Power Minister Rajkumar Singh will call on the visiting dignitary. The Guinean Prime Minister will also attend a program in Vishakhapatnam. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will embark on a two-day visit to the Maldives from tomorrow. She'll be accompanied by Foreign Secretary Vijay K. Gokhale and other senior officials. During the visit, Mrs. Swaraj will have a bilateral meeting with her Maldivian counterpart, Abdullah Shahid. She'll also have delegation-level meetings with Defence Minister Maria Ahmad Didi and Finance Minister Ibrahim Amir. The Ministry of External Affairs said New Delhi attaches the highest importance to its relationship with Mali, which is marked by trust, transparency, mutual understanding and sensitivity. The first BRICS Sherpa meeting under the presidency of Brazil concluded yesterday at Curitiba in Brazil. 
Secretary Economic Relations in the Ministry of External Affairs, T.S. Pirumurthy, led the Indian delegation at the two-day meeting. The External Affairs Ministry said in a statement that Brazil has identified countering terrorism as one of its priority areas for BRICS under its presidency. It said Brazil's priorities for its presidency include science, technology and innovation, digital economy, new development bank and BRICS Business Council, as well as countering transnational crime and terrorism. In New Zealand, the main accused in the mosque shootings that killed 49 people in Christchurch appeared in, a, appeared in court on a murder charge. 28-year-old Brenton Tarrant, who filmed himself rampaging through two mosques, did not request bail and was taken into custody until his next court appearance scheduled for April 5. The suspect documented his radicalization and two years of preparations in a lengthy and conspiracy-filled far-right manifesto. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern described the killing as a terrorist attack and vowed to change gun laws in the country. Meanwhile, Australia has started deploying extra police force at major events and mosques following the Christchurch terrorist attack. Victoria Police Deputy Commissioner Wendy Steendham said the state has been put on high alert as it would be hosting the Formula One Grand Prix and a community open day in mosques statewide on the weekend. In Afghanistan, a local television journalist was shot dead in Khost province yesterday. The killing comes less than a week after another journalist in the southern Helmand province was wounded by a bomb attached to his car. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack. Last year, 17 journalists and media workers were killed in Afghanistan. In Mozambique, at least 19 people died and more than 70 were injured after Cyclone Idai hit the central part of the country. The tragedy has cut off Baira, a city of half a million from the rest of the country, after the roads were swamped and power lines were damaged. The World Food Programme said it will move 20 tonnes of emergency food aid to the affected areas. Slovaks began voting today in round one of a presidential election. A vocal government critic, Zuzana Kaputova, is poised to win the election after an investigative journalist's murder dealt a blow to the ruling elite. 45-year-old Kaputova was among tens of thousands of protesters who took to the streets of the Eurozone country last year after the killing raised concerns about media freedom and political corruption. Opinion polls give the environmental lawyer, a mother of two, a double-digit lead over European Commission Vice President Maros Sepkovic, a 52-year-old career diplomat backed by the ruling Smer SD party. Journalist Jan Kuciak and his fiancée were gunned down in February 2018, just as he was to publish a story on alleged ties between Slovak politicians and the Italian mafia, plus associated irregularities in EU farm subsidy payments. German journalist Billy Six, detained by Venezuelan intelligence services four months ago, was freed yesterday in Caracas. He has been asked to report to the court every 15 days. Six was arrested in northern Falcon State for allegedly photographing President Nicolas Maduro very closely. According to the German embassy, Six went on a hunger strike in December and also published a letter claiming he had been denied the right to defense and basic medical information regarding his illness. India will host the Under-17 Women's Football World Cup in 2020. This was announced by the President of the International Football Federation, Gianni Infantino, after a council meeting at Miami in the United States last night. He said FIFA is delighted to announce that India has been confirmed as the host of the Women's World Cup. This will be the second FIFA tournament India will be hosting after the Under-17 Men's World Cup in 2017. And now before we close the headlines once again, Election Commission says it's determined to curb abuse of money power during elections, guidelines issued to monitor election expenditure. BJP Central Election Committee to meet in New Delhi this afternoon, likely to release first list of looks of our candidates. Deputy Election Commissioner Sudeep Jain reviews election preparedness of West Bengal today. India to continue efforts to get Jesha Muhammad Chief Masood Azhar listed under UN 1267 sanctions. President Ramnath Govind confers more Padma Awards on prominent personalities in New Delhi. And in sports, India to host the Under-17 Women's Football World Cup in 2020. And for details of these stories and more, log on to our website, newsonair.nic.in. With that, we end the midday news.